I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know before buying the Miss Freelancer Miss, and we're starting right now. Hello, how can Miss help you today? Systems on. Welcome to a Star Citizens Buyer's Guide. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the MISC Freelancer MISC. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, go over its default weapons and components, as well as my recommendations, review pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Freelancer MISC. The 2950 Invictus Free Fly Week is here. This review is voted on by the community. Head over to Twitter now to place your votes for Drake Day. While you're there, give me a follow. Special thanks for all of the support from the community. It makes the 20 plus hours it takes to make one of these worth it. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Subliminal and my passions are Star Citizen and content creation. Be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Remember to check the pinned comment below for corrections, afterthoughts, and updated loadouts. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Miss Freelancer Miss is a limited edition militarized variant of the classic UEE mercantile ship. Due to early payload incidents, only a small number of these ships have been manufactured. This version sacrifices most of the cargo capacity to make way for missiles. MISC is a human-based manufacturer on Saisei in the Centauri system. MISC is also known for their especially ergonomic factories with every spacecraft piece assembled robotically with expert precision. MISC is the only human spacecraft corporation to sign a Lend Lease Agreement with the Xi'an, agreed to in a closed-door conference in 2910. The Freelancer variants include the base long-range cargo hauler Freelancer, the exploration variant Dur, the heavy cargo hauler Max, and the gunboat variant Miss. As of today, the Freelancer Miss is for sale and upgrade on the Pledge Store for $175 for a very limited time. It is also available in-game at Lorville's New Deal for around 2.5 million Alpha UEC. However, it is not available to rent. Now that we know a little bit more about the Freelancer Miss, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. For this tour, I have changed the paint to this awesome Freelancer black paint job found on the Pledge Store. On the nose, we have two of these cones. I'm not sure, but I think they're sensors. If you know for sure, let me know in the comments. This is its side entrance. On each side, the MIS has a proprietary turret that holds two size three weapon hardpoints. Above here, you can see the missile bay doors. Under the wings, we have two size four racks with two size three missiles. Here you can see the Freelancer's manned turret with two size two hardpoints. Here we can see its massive main thrusters. This is the entrance to the cargo hold. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's head inside. This is where 28 of the 36 SCU is stored. A tumbro cyclone can fit in here, but it is not recommended. However, anything smaller will fit just fine. Let's check out that turret. It has four MFDs and a radar. And one of its common complaints is its forward facing view. On the port side, we have life support, a shield generator, avionics, two coolers, and a quantum drive. On the starboard side, we have a couple of radar components, a power plant, a second avionics, and a second shield generator. All of these components are physicalized and are easily accessible. Let's head toward the fore of the MIS. Here is where the MIS stores 20 of its size 3 missiles. Let's head towards docking. Here is where another 8 SCU can be stored and where we can access the docking ring. Let's head into the living quarters. To our left, we have what appears to be a food processor and drink maker that are not yet functional. On our right is the head. I'm pretty sure you can take a space sheet in here, I just can't find the button. There is also a shower and a sink. 
Moving to our right is some sort of non-functional terminal. Here we have access to the airlock and the side entrance that we saw earlier. On the port and starboard side, we have two beds that also double as escape pods. Let's head towards the flight deck. These two crew seats have a fully functional MFD. The co-pilot seat has a couple of terribly placed MFDs unless you have head tracking and a few well-placed ones. Let's check out the pilot seat. The pilot seat has a pretty similar setup except the middle MFD is replaced by a HUD and radar. The Freelancer Series HUD has not been updated to the new building blocks UI. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, some bombers, some missile boats, and most of the Freelancer variants. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Freelancer Miss weighs in at over 210,000 kilograms and takes fifth place. It fits in at 38 meters in length and ties in fifth place with the rest of the Freelancers. It totes 36 SCU of cargo and takes fifth place again. It has a max crew size of five and ties in second place with the Connie and other Freelancers. It carries 250,000 quantum fuel units and ties in second place with the other variants again. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 154 meters per second and ties in fourth place. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of just over a thousand and comes in fourth. It slowly steers in with a maximum yaw pitch of 47 degrees per second and ties in sixth place. It has a total hull HP of over 9,400 and ties in fifth place. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of 1920 and takes the second spot. It shoots its way through with a default turret DPS of 598 and takes 6th place. And it drops bombs with a combined missile payload of over 125,000 and takes the 4th spot. And the Freelancer Miss is available for sale in-game for over 2.5 million Alpha UEC and takes the 5th spot again. It got 5th place a lot, didn't it? This buyer's guide is brought to you by my Locations of Standing collection over on Display. Any purchase made supports the channel, and for every purchase, Display will plant a tree in places that need it the most. Click the link in the description. Let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. On each side, the Freelancer Miss has a PC2 dual mount with two size 3 hardpoints. Each hardpoint is equipped with a Mantis GT220. I prefer these on light fighters, but with the Freelancer's higher life expectancy, these would run out of ammo pretty quick. I'll be swapping them out for two size 3 Tarantula GT870 Mark III's. One GT870 is size 3, does 294 damage, times 80 RPM for a total of 392 DPS and an outstanding 3100 meter range. With ballistics, ammo should be taken into account. It has 720 rounds that would deplete in 540 seconds of continuous fire. If you prefer energy weapons, Attrition's or CF Series laser repeaters will work well also. For missiles on each wing, it comes with a MSD-423 missile rack and a MSD-322 missile rack, holding two Arrestor 3s. If you know anything about missiles in Star Citizen, this doesn't make sense. It's a bug. A size 3 missile rack shouldn't be able to hold more than one size 3 missile. Furthermore, this hardpoint can actually hold a size 4 missile rack. Once you fire these, you will not be able to equip two more back. No biggie. I'm going to be swapping each of them out for a size 4 MSD-442 missile rack and add a pack of four Strike Force 2s to each of them. Strike Force 2s are size 2, cross section, do almost 3800 damage, have a 2.4 second lock time, and a 3800 meter lock range. Adding Rattler 2s would also be a great option. This is a multi-purpose build. If you are looking to take down large ships, you may want to stick with the size 3 missiles. Inside the hull of the mist, we have two, let's just call them missile silos. These hold a whopping two size three Thunderbolt 3s. I'll be swapping them out for Arrestor 3s. Arrestor 3s are size three, cross section, do over 4,600 damage, have a 3.5 second lock time, and then over 10,000 meter lock range. Now let's talk about the standard components and my recommendations. The standard power plant on the mist is the size two grade three Maelstrom. I recommend swapping it out for the size 2 grade 1 JS400 with over 10,700 max power generation per second and a 10 second draw request time. This will add 1,250 max power draw and shorten the time it takes to reach that power draw down to 10 seconds. 
For coolers, it comes with two size two grade three Arctic coolers. For size two coolers, I prefer to use cool cores. They are a good balance between price and performance. One cool core is grade three, has a cooling rate of 8,000 kilos and a draw request time of 10 seconds. This will add an additional 4,600 cooling capacity and will shorten the time it takes to reach that capacity down to 10 seconds, getting much more cooling to your components much faster. For shields, it has two size two grade one full stop shield generators. I recommend placing these with FR76s. This will slightly raise its shield pool, significantly raise its regen rate, and lower its down regen delay and draw request time. And lastly, the QT drive it comes with is a size two grade three cross field. It's size two, grade three, has a 236 megameter per second quantum speed, a 2.25 second spool up, and a 22 second cool down time. With the Freelancer Mrs. Quantum Fuel capacity, it can make the trip from Port Alizar to Microtech and back without stopping to refuel. This has great speed and enough range, so I'll keep it. You gotta pay to play here, guys and gals. If you don't have around 380,000 alpha UEC to spend on all this at once, I would buy them in the following order, and maybe even one shield or cooler at a time. After you watch the rest of this review, check out the link to my Oracle.games loadout in the description. Here you can find the prices and locations on where to find these items in the verse. The meta is constantly changing. Head over to the Subliminal Channel Discord where I store my updated loadouts. I am building a community there for citizens who want to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. Click the link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. Having 36 SCU isn't necessary, but it's good to have anyway. Heck, if they bring back Vice, it would be great. It has plenty of room for all of your friends, even though only the pilot and one turret gunner can shoot. Obviously, being able to tote around 20 size 3 and 16 size 2 missiles from my loadout accounts to a ton of missile payload. Its pilot DPS potential with four gimbaled size 3s is amazing. It has a pretty large amount of quantum fuel capacity, so you can equip some very fast but less efficient quantum drives, and it can still make the trip from one end of Stanton to another on one tank. It has tons of amenities, food and beverage makers, toilet, shower, and beds to log out in. This will come in handy once these mechanics are fully implemented. I would say its cons are, it handles like a brick. Not as bad as the Connie series though, but this is expected because of its size. It's slow in regards to both SCM and max speed, so you won't be outrunning anything in this. Also, its HP could be better. I'm surprised the Cutlass Black has more hull HP. However, the Cutty only has one shield generator. And the Freelancer series most complained about issue, it's flight deck view. It's like looking through a freaking mail slot. All right, Subliminal, so what are your thoughts? I'll just come right out and say it. I think the Miss is one of the best multi-purpose combat ships in the verse, especially for solo or duo players. It brings a ton of missile payload and weapon damage to the fight. It's great for almost every type of mission in Star Citizen, from bounty hunting to claim jumpers to stacking multiple mission boxes. All while bringing along a crew that can operate in comfort. If you are looking to upgrade your base freelancer or cutlass to be more suitable for combat, look no further. Earlier this week, I gave a pretty good review of the Kane Andromeda. If you own one but find yourself to be a little bit sluggish or can never find enough people to man the guns, this would be a great option for you. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. Don't forget to vote for the next ship for Drake Day. Head over to Twitter now. The Drake poll will end soon. Actually, it may already be over. If you've enjoyed this review, check out more of my content. If you'd like, there are six ways to support the channel. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over on Display. Number four, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. Number five, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton collection available to all patrons. If not, your viewership is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.